here we are in the north wing of the KF Aerospace Center for Excellence. Uh, I'm sitting in front of our Starfighter. Uh, we're showing the aircraft in its cold lake look, circa 1960. This aircraft uh, shows really, really well. It's certainly one of our favorites. Well, probably the most unique characteristic of the Starfighter is the fact that it is a missile with an engine and a human. Very little else. You can see it has virtually no wing, 22 feet of wingspan. It is truly an engine with a pilot and a really pointy nose and Mach 2.2. This particular model, a D model, D for dual, two-place aircraft used primarily for training, wasn't quite as fast as the single seat, however, still nearly double the speed of sound. A couple of unique pieces uh, of the Starfighter or characteristics of the Starfighter. If you get going too fast, you would literally melt the engine. There's a light in the aircraft that simply says, slow, you're going too fast. You're gonna melt yourself down. A Couple other interesting characteristics you can't see on this side, we can't see on the other side, a rat. Should power be lost, a ram air turbine drops down and provides basic electricity and hydraulics for the aircraft. And uh, it's, uh, we're displaying the aircraft with the rat exposed. I'm not sure if you can see some of the ground equipment that we have below it. We've left this equipment in the same yellow that it would have been shown, it would have been in originally back in Cold Lake in the 1960s. The aircraft has a very unique tail. We, some people refer to it as a slab. It's a flying tail. It has no elevator. A single piece horizontal stabilizer that does all of the pitch work on the aircraft. Here's our ejection seat. This is a, a Stanley C2 or a Lockheed seat. You'll often hear uh, Starfighter pilots uh, and reference to their spurs. So the pilot would wear what really looked like a spur and it would be tied to this. And when he fired himself out of the aircraft, it would suck his heels in. The seat would do all kinds of things, including throwing nets around his arms. And then the business end of our seat here, this long cylindrical tube called a ROCAT or a rocket catapult. And this was, this was the, truly the business end of the seat. It's with this that he and the seat exited the aircraft. Believe it or not, the early ejection seats in the Starfighter exited the bottom of the aircraft. That didn't prove to be effective when the aircraft was low to the ground, so they thought better of that and uh, modified the aircraft so the ejection seats thereafter fired out the top of the aircraft. We're here at the back end of our Starfighter today going to spend some time talking about the, the afterburner. So the engine package on the Starfighter, OEL-7 engine, afterburning. Perhaps we make 10,000 pounds of thrust on the engine alone. By the time we light off the burner and have it at full throttle, we're almost 16,000 pounds of thrust. So better than a full third of the thrust available to us is with the burner. Inside the hangar, in the north wing, in fact, we have both an engine and an afterburner assembled, and uh, we'd like to take you inside and talk a little, bit, a little bit more about it in depth. Hello again. So we've come inside our north wing where we have uh, a display engine and a display afterburner. So this is the OEL-7, the very same engine that we have in our Starfighter outside. OEL, Orenda Engines Limited, Model 7, great Canadian-made engine. So we spoke outside about the power plant package, the engine package. Engine's pretty simple. We spin a compressor. We can see the blades and veins inside. We compress that air, typically something like nine to one. So we take mass quantities of air, compress it down perhaps nine times. And at this stage of the engine here, the combustion section of the engine, we're going to introduce fuel and fire. Once the engine's lit and burning, we burnt the compressed gases with the fuel we've introduced and we've generated thrust. In this case, somewhere in the neighborhood of 10,000 pounds of thrust. But what we're really here to talk about 
is the afterburner at really the business end. If we make 16,000 pounds of thrust in this engine, a full third of it's happening here at the burner. 10,000 pounds up front, uh, almost 6,000 pounds here in the burner. This particular nozzle, if you recall from earlier, the nozzle on the Starfighter outside is open. Open is when the burner's lit and we're making a lot of power. Closed is when the engine is running without the burner. The nozzle is variable. Different flight regimes require it to be in different positions. Very, very important for Captain Bob to, in an emergency to be able to close this nozzle. So there's the normal system, actuation rods here that drive our burner, and then an emergency nitrogen system that will slam this nozzle shut should he get into trouble. So the afterburning engine, we make thrust up front, we reburn the available oxygen in the spent exhaust gases with copious amounts of fuel. We produce almost 6,000 pounds of thrust on the burner alone. To give you an example of how thirsty this engine package is, if we take Bob, we strap him in the front seat over there, we fill his internal tanks, we fill his tip tanks, and we fill his pylon tanks, and we tell him to go on full burner, he'll run out of gas in about 20 minutes. That's it. Everything it's got, it's burnt in 20 minutes. So 30,000 pounds of fuel, gone 20 minutes later. So thanks for coming out and hanging out with us here at the Center for Excellence today in the wonderful North Wing with our fantastic Canadian-built Orenda Engine Limited or OEL 7 engine. Uh, we have a lot of fun spending time with you. I would like to thank Bob Gary, our Starfighter captain, perhaps our, our most, uh, or at least one of our most valuable volunteers. He spends a lot of time talking to people about his experiences in the RCAF, flying Starfighters equipped with this engine fly in some other aircraft that we have here at the center. So thanks again. My name is Darcy Barker. I'm the chief engineer here at the KF Center for Excellence. Appreciate your time.